Hi there, it's Z here, and welcome to the sixth in a series of videos that I've been making related to capital budgeting optimization through the use of linear programming tools. And uh, if you've just joined this, uh, you may want to try and look at the videos that preceded this one because we're going to be revisiting some of those um, things that we did in the previous videos. Um, but if uh, you follow this from the previous videos, then uh, welcome back. Now, um, where we last left off, uh, we looked at uh, a pretty complicated looking um, scenario where uh, we were trying to solve uh, a optimization problem related to phasing a project across time where you had uncertainty in project costs, but also uncertainty in project uh returns now uh before i get into uh solving it using a commercial piece of uh, software i wanted to take a bit of a detour and then just go back to um, scenario three now if you remember scenario three uh, we solved it using pulp uh, in addition to doing it directly through excel's uh, native solver uh, and you will remember from the video number four, uh, we also looked at another tool called Open Solver uh, that allows you to use a whole bunch of uh, other um, solver engines besides the ones that are available in Excel. Now, I want to sort of round it off uh, where, if you recall, in a previous video, I talked about the separation between a model versus the data. And uh, that was one of the advantages of uh, moving into uh, Python completely and not trying to do everything on a spreadsheet. Now, uh, the person who created Open Solver, uh, and shout out to this gentleman uh, who is a uh, academic in the uh, University of Auckland, Andrew Mason. Uh, he's also created another uh, open source tool that extends the uh, the way you can use solvers in Excel uh, while still sort of uh, allowing you to, to do it in code. And if that sounds cryptic, it's probably best to explain that uh, using an example on the screen. So we're going to go back to... Uh, scenario three rather than jumping to four and five for now and um, what this tool that's called solver studio does is uh, you can see here is it's quite a clever application that is an add-in to excel that allows you to write code in a number of languages so pulp uh, but even Payomo, which uh, you will remember we used when we looked at uh, scenario four, because uh, Payomo has uh, nonlinear solvers in its library as well. Uh, so it's got a whole range of different languages that you can use. And the Solver Studio allows you to um, write code directly into the Excel file, but save it in a separate place. So this code uh, is not uh, directly coupled to the spreadsheet per se, and you can recycle it for uh, other, um, other sets of uh, input data. And uh, it's quite neat because it saves you the trouble of extracting this, uh, putting it into a CSV and then dumping it in uh, Python as I've had to do here, because you can now through the use of name ranges. So if you go to formulas and you go to name manager, you've got a number of uh, ranges with names. The solver studio allows you to pick up the uh, names that you've defined in Excel and uh, reference them directly in your Python code. So uh, you can also see what that data looks like. So 
I've done some labeling. So this is uh, the project ID that I've used as an index. I've put in uh, the NPV and the CAPEX for the various years, and also the whether you select or you don't select a, uh, a project, and also um, CAPEX constraints and the total. So let me hide data. And it's uh, quite neat because what it does is uh, you can run the uh, code without interacting with uh, Excel in the sense that you draw information from a spreadsheet, but you don't send it back to the spreadsheet. So that's actually possible. So this piece of code is actually almost the same as the earlier uh, version that you saw in uh, Python with the difference now that instead of having to reference uh, a data frame that uh, I put into uh, Python, I am referencing directly ranges that have been named in Excel. And uh, you can see here, I've suppressed this last one. So let me just do that. Now I've blanked this all out, showed it to be zero. And I'm just going to run solve. And doesn't take too long because it's a fairly simple model, which is why I chose it for this. Uh, hmm. Ah, okay, done. So it, it's uh, outputting the uh, optimal uh, NPV and also the various decisions on whether or not you should select or not select a project. And you can see nothing's going on in Excel. It's all blank because uh, this currently is just one way where you're sucking the information from uh, name ranges, putting it into a Python code that runs in a way Im embedded in the spreadsheet. But you can also uh, send information back. So I'm just going to do that now where I'll uncomment this last line here where what this is going to do is there's a range called output where if I just do this, you can see here, output. Uh, right now it's all zeros, but what I can do is I can set output to be uh, the solved optimal values for uh, selection, which is something that's calculated in the uh, pulp uh, LP model. So let me run it again. And what you'll see is the numbers that came out here now get dumped into Excel. So now you've got like a take information of Excel, run it in Python, uh, and then send it back to Excel. And it's a, quite a neat uh, way of doing it where you sort of marry uh, the best of uh, both worlds where you have a piece of code uh, that you can reuse that's uh, in a way abstracted away from the data. Uh, but you still have a very tight coupling with uh, the Excel environment. Uh, there are a um, couple of things that are worth noting though. So uh, the uh, Python version that is being run here is uh, on something called Iron Python. And uh, it's a version of Python that is friendly with uh, .NET. So this is what uh, the uh, Excel uses in the background. Uh, so it's not the full version of Python that I was using a moment ago and that was running uh, out of uh, Anaconda. And uh, that's important to note because there are certain libraries that don't seem to import well in uh, in Iron Python. And uh, a big one for me is uh, NumPy because uh, that's something that you probably want to use, which is why I uh, and SciPy as well, which is why I didn't try to do this on uh, the scenario number four because uh, or five because those are a bit more complex. But still, uh, for what it is, it's uh, quite useful. And the amazing thing is uh, both uh, Solver Studio and Open Solver are free. Uh, they're open source and anybody can use it. So I, I just thought I'd uh, give a shout out to uh, the uh, creator of uh, both these really useful tools um, and highlighted before I dip into the uh, final video that covers a commercially uh, licensed tool called uh, Frontline Analytics Solver. Right. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.